and our super special guest, the songwriters. Uh, can we talk to them, Steve Anderson and Alicia Francois? my questions, but you guys get ready. <laughs> Roy, I gotta start with you because we gotta start with the beginning. I always like to start with how these things even come to be. Uh, yeah. Of course, we know the success of Frozen. Um, this project, it's a 20 minute uh, adventure. Where did this come from? Was it originally, I think it was announced as a TV thing, or what? So initially it was going to be a TV thing, but I mean, the, the wonderful thing uh, at the studio is that John Lasseter believed that the director should own the story. And uh, initially, uh, John went to Kevin and Stevie with an idea for a Christmas special. Mm -hmm. And uh, let them, they can tell you a little bit about that. What have you done about Christmas special, feels like? I think he thought that maybe we might do okay with it, so. Yeah, John's only real, um, you know, really asked of us, the three of us from that, and talked about it, and um, obviously we, you know, we wanted it to be something, you know, the little tell story was not going to say something, that it would have some resonance to help us, you know, what that was going to be, it's, uh, all John really said was like, hey, you be, you know, love to have all the characters in it, and have songs, obviously, and he thought it'd be, fun to try a, a story that's focused around Olaf, so it's, you know, it's a shorter piece, so okay. an opportunity there to kind of, kind of revolve around him, especially at you know, kind of this holiday time. Now, I'm going to, you guys worked on it, you worked on it, worked on it, we're going to go back to that in a minute, but how did it become a theatrical? That's my question. And, and if it did, and when it did, was it up? Or is this what the TV is? I mean, I just want to get an idea. Yeah, we, we uh, actually presented this. We had an international marketing forum up at Pixar <laughs> about a year, about a little over a year ago, maybe. They do those things a times. Yeah, and we brought, we brought the television special, which was what we thought it was going to be, and just to share. It was just a FYI, here's what we're doing, tell, tell your people out in the field. Literally, uh, right afterwards, they had a breakout meeting and came back to us that afternoon and said, hey, we're interested in actually taking this to the big screen. And uh, we were kind of blown away because uh, we didn't, did not expect that. The difference between this is, it's, this is probably about a minute longer than what the television uh, version would have been. Um, you know, we, we had to go in, uh, fortunately, it was kind of structured in such a way that really we only needed to do a little patching to kind of get time. Uh, we had the commercial breaks. Yeah, we had to pad the commercial breaks. But a couple of the commercial breaks were so clean in terms of cuts that it, they worked, and then a couple we needed to fuck with. I didn't notice the commercial breaks. But yeah, uh, perfect. But the animation is so theatrical. It's so perfect. And actually, I think it's, well, it's okay. Looks even more the theatrical quality uh, character animation is really good, yeah. Yeah. and uh, kind of a, another step further, I think. And w w I get a, I'm going to get off the TV aspect of it, but would it have been this good on the TV budget, or was it? Yeah, uh, was it was different. Yeah, yeah. 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 a lot of the same animators that worked on the movie. Yeah, the production values are always the same. I mean, wow. what we saw was what was always intended, just like with the addition of, as you said, like 30 seconds to a minute of just little, you know, little shots just to kind of pad things out to sort of mask where the breaks would have been. That's all it was. Everything else was the it was it was interesting working on this because for me because I I had never inherited a world before. We I'd always been in the beginning as as a seven CD. and so I was I was a little reluctant at first because I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's just not my world. But I think we embraced it all very quickly, and as soon as you know. It, it, you know, it, let's face it, this has become a kind of a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. And we had the great good fortune of had, having Brent Homan uh, as our head of character animation and uh, Michael Franceschi and, and Chad Sellers as, as the two uh, kind of, uh, lead animators on it. And it was just a terrific experience because we all, we, we all set out to kind of further the world of Arendelle. And we wanted to further each of those characters, deepen the relationship of the sisters, and also get to know Olaf a little bit more because he can he can be irritating. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> the majority <laughs> of uh, the we were never worried about how the show was going to look or anything else. I mean, obviously, everybody here is the top of the game. We were fortunate to work with a lot of the same folks that that supervised different departments of the movie. Michael Giamo, who you guys I'm sure know, is an amazing production designer, and you know, we really. The first time we 
actually had to work with them, you know, uh, on the project. So that was great. I mean, it's kind of learning from somebody who you knows their craft. And, um, so, yeah, and I think one of the things that we were excited about, um, not being too specific, but the, the fact that a lot of it takes place at night, we thought was really cool. So it sort of lent a really certain mood to it, you know, it's a color palette and, you know, sort of a romantic kind of quality that really reminded me of growing up in the Midwest, you know, Christmas Eve and driving to our farmhouse in the snow and, you know, it was really provocative or something like that. Like that. The story, um, the idea of traditions, I thought that was kind of brilliant, really, because it, it, it's a great way to bring everybody together, and yet everybody's got so many, so many, so much variety in that. Could you talk to that a little bit about how you even got to that? Uh, that yeah, I'll just to talk, because we, you know, John asked, like, hey, you know, take a look at Olaf and see if we can center a story around him, right? And immediately, I think both of us were like, okay, it's going to be challenging because he's designed very specifically as a supporting character. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's very guileless, right? He never gets mad. He, you know, he loves everybody. And so, you know, mm -hmm. as storytellers, like, that's a challenge, you know, to sort of craft a, you know, a narrative around a character like that. But I think when we could lean into the idea that he was kind of a child and, you know, holidays, Christmas, that kind of was sort of a wide-eyed answer. That was really helpful, right? And then yeah, the fact that, he, like you were saying, that he's really the kid he's only been alive for, like, six months. We're imagining this would take place, but, you know, the first holiday after the right. original movie. So yeah, he would never have experienced any of this before. It was all brand new to him. So um, we thought that was kind of a cool thing to play with. Like yeah, you know, like you're saying, like looking at it through the eyes of a child, like what is this? You know. So and we talked about we had an early meeting early on, which would be nice. Um, I sort of pitched a, a handful of ideas, you know, uh, to John and said, you know, and uh, I said, oh, here's some different ideas. Just you know, kind of lots of different shots and dark, some of which are very silly and strange. And and we had a board up that you know had. You know, traditions essentially the you know the you know, Morocco painting, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, and you know, did my wife and my son baking Christmas cookies, and you know what I mean, just sort of things to really sort of uh, remind you of what that could be. And, and John, I think his credit always dialed right into the emotional core of something, and recognized that that was a really relatable uh, dramatic <laughs> foundation, and especially the marriage of a character that doesn't really have any traditions with the idea of prison itself. That was interesting. Well, well, also that Anna and Elsa, again, I mean, as you see in the show, is that they haven't been together in so many years, so we thought, what would, they wouldn't really have any traditions if they did, and they wouldn't really remember them. So we're like, oh, okay, so we have the three main characters that have this dilemma. So we're like, that seems like the way you're going, that's the way, that's what John, how John looked at it as well. I love that the, uh, everybody in town uh, accepts uh, Olaf as a... Thing. I know I love yeah. <laughs> 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 I've been talking so many. Right. Yeah. 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 Y